Chapter 7 The dandelions in the fields had gone by, their heads soft as feathers. The summer roses were opening. Our neighbors Matthew and Maggie came to help Papa plow up a new field for corn. Sarah stood with us on the porch watching their wagon wind up the road, two horses pulling it and one tied in back. I remembered the last time we had stood here alone, Caleb and I, waiting for Sarah. Sarah's hair was in thick braids that circled her head, while daisies tucked here and there. Papa had picked them for her. Old Bess and Jack ran along the inside of the fence, wickering at the new horses. Papa needs five horses for the big gang plow, Caleb told Sarah. Prairie grass is hard. Matthew and Maggie came with their two children and a sack full of chickens. Maggie emptied the sack into the yard and three red banty chickens clucked and scattered. They are for you, she told Sarah, for eating. Sarah loved the chickens. She clucked back to them and fed them grain. They followed her, shuffling and scratching primly in the dirt. I knew they would not be for eating. The children were young and named Rose and Violet after flowers. They hooted and laughed and chased the chickens who flew up to the porch roof, then the dogs who crept quietly under the porch. Seal had long ago fled to the barn to sleep in cool hay. Sarah and Maggie helped hitch the horses to the plow. Then they set up a big table in the shade of the barn, covering it with a quilt and a kettle of flowers in the middle. They sat on the porch while Caleb and Matthew and Papa began their morning of plowing. I mixed biscuit dough just inside the door watching. You are lonely, yes? asked Maggie in her soft voice. Sarah's eyes filled with tears. Slowly I stirred the dough. Maggie reached over and took Sarah's hand. I miss the hills of Tennessee sometimes, she said. Do not miss the hills, Maggie, I thought. I miss the sea, said Sarah. Do not miss the hills, do not miss the sea. I stirred and stirred the dough. I miss my brother William, said Sarah, but he is married. The house is hers now, not mine any longer. There are three old aunts who all squawk together like crows at dawn. I miss them too. There are always things to miss, said Maggie, no matter where you are. I looked out and saw Papa and Matthew and Caleb working. Rose and Violet ran in the fields. I felt something brush my legs and looked down at Nick wagging his tail. I would miss you, Nick, I whispered. I would. I knelt down and scratched his ears. I miss Mama. I nearly forgot, said Maggie on the porch. I have something more for you. I carried the bull outside and watched Maggie lift a wo low wooden box out of the wagon. Plants, she said to Sarah, for your garden. My garden? Sarah bent down to touch the plants. Zinnias and marigolds and wild fever few, said Maggie. You must have a garden wherever you are. Sarah smiled. I had a garden in Maine with dahlias and columbine and nasturtiums, the color of the sun when it sets. I don't know if nasturtiums would grow here. Try, said Maggie. You must have a garden. We planted the flowers by the porch, turning over the soil and patting it around them and watering. Lottie and Nick came to sniff, and the chickens walked in the dirt, leaving prints. In the fields, the horses pulled the plow up and down under the hot summer sun. Maggie wiped her face, leaving a streak of dirt. Soon you can drive your wagon over to my house, and I will give you more. I have Tansy. Sarah frowned. I have never driven a wagon. I can teach you, said Maggie, and so can Anna and Caleb. And Jacob. Sarah turned to me. Can you? She asked. Can you drive a wagon? I nodded. And Caleb? Yes. In Maine, said Sarah, I would talk, walk to town. Here it is different, said Maggie. Here you will drive. Way off in the sky, clouds gathered. Matthew and Papa and Caleb came in from the fields, their work done. We all ate in the shade. We are glad you are here, said Matthew to Sarah. A new friend. Maggie misses her friends sometimes. Sarah nodded. There is always something to miss, no matter where you are, 
she said, smiling at Maggie. Rose and Violet fell asleep in the grass, their bellies full of meat and greens and biscuits. And when it was time to go, Papa and Matthew lifted them into the wagon to sleep on blankets. Sarah walked slowly behind the wagon for a long time, waving, watching it disappear. Caleb and I ran to bring her back, the chickens running wildly behind us. What shall we name them? asked Sarah, laughing as the chickens followed us into the house. I smiled. I was right. The chickens would not be for eating. And then Papa came just before the rain, bringing Sarah the first roses of summer.